Hey. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh. So I'm gonna do my blow dry tutorial because I did one a while ago and I forgot to save it. So then I had like so many people that were like so mad about it because I never saved it and it never got posted. So this one, dang it, is getting saved. So I'm hoping that you guys will be able to hear me when I get started blow drying. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, so before I get started, I'm gonna, I will put products in my hair so I can show you those products. Um, okay, so normally what I do is I, and I, I mean, everybody does stuff different. This is just kind of my routine. I usually wash my hair at night and then in the morning, I get it wet again. So I sleep on it wet, I don't do anything with it at night, and then in the morning, I'll re-wet it, stick my head under the faucet, and just re-wet it, and then I let it dry. Um, okay, wait, I re-wet it, and then I put products in it. So I put the products in it, which I'm gonna do right now, so I'll show you what products I put in it. So the first thing I'm gonna put in there is the um, Aveda's Damage Control. So this is a heat protectant, so this protects, you know, against any thermal styling. Because I'm blonde, it's like imperative to have a thermal protectant. So this is, again, the Aveda Damage Control, and I spray that all over. Now, this will not weigh your hair down at all. Like, one of the, it's super lightweight, so it's not gonna like, you know, condition the hair or anything like that, like smooth it, it just protects it. If you have really coarse, like thick or frizzy hair, this is a really good one too. And this one's the, Dam the Aveda Damage Remedy Daily Hair Repair. So this is actually is gonna help repair the hair and then it also works as a heat protectant. So if you need that, re that hair, you know, really intense re repairing and a heat protectant, this is like basically kind of like a leave-in conditioning treatment and this is awesome. So, um, next product I'm gonna put in is the Volumizing Tonic. So, Aveda Volumizing Tonic. This one goes right at the roots. Basically, the ear and above. And I just kind of take sections and spray that all over. And then, and that just goes at the roots, okay? And then the thickening tonic is the next one. Um, the volumizing tonic creates grip to the hair so that when you are blow drying it with your flat brush or your round brush, it will um, you know, hold it better and create that lift and grip so that one just goes at the roots. So then thickening tonic is the next one and thickening tonic goes all over the hair and this actually expands the hair by like 30%, making it all over appear thicker and fuller. So that one goes everywhere. Then, um, the very last one that I'm gonna put in is Texture Tonic. I know this is a lot of products, but I kid you not, I put these in every time I wash my hair. And if I don't use them, it doesn't work. Like I cannot do it. Cause it's really fine and it just is like so flat. Okay, texture tonic. This can also be used dry, but I do like to spray. This one you gotta be cautious with. I just do a little bit of that, and it again kind of bulks the hair up to create a little more grip to it. Um, okay, so now, so okay, so when I do that, a typical day for me when I wash my hair is I do that, get it wet, put those products in it, and then I let it dry while I do my makeup, my clothes, pretty much everything else, I'll let my hair dry. Now, when I let it dry, so typically I part my hair on this side or down the middle. So when I let it dry, I actually let it all dry. So I flip it the other direction and then I'll kind of just let it air dry like this while I do my makeup and everything else and with the product in it. So now, because I already kind of let it dry and then I showed you how to put the products in, we're gonna blow dry. Um, I use a flat brush. Uh, that's just because I don't need, I used to use a round brush for years and years. 
I used a round brush, but I don't use one so much anymore because I just feel like it takes a lot of time and I like to just more get kind of a smoother flat look anyways. So, okay, starting off, can you, can you guys hear me? I'm hoping you can hear me with this, uh, with the blow dryer phone. Let me know if you can hear me. Give me some thumbs up, hearts, something. <laughs> okay, so great. You're great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to kind of take everything from about the eyebrow up, and I'm just really focusing that blow dryer right at the root and just combing it with my flat brush. And then I'm going to take this section, and again, I'm just going to focus that blow dryer right at the root. And then I'm going to flip that flat, that flat brush around. And see how I kind of have a curve to the flat brush, so it's like this, not necessarily like this. I'm pulling it out, and I'm almost drawing like a half circle with my brush like that. And that's going to give it kind of the effect of what a round brush would give, but with a flat brush, okay? Sorry, my blow dryer keeps knocking me down. Because I'm super professional. And I have it rigged up pretty nice. <laughs> and then back here, same thing. So I kind of just work with getting that underneath dried first. Here, kind of get those back hairs. Well, hello from Germany. That's awesome. Oh, I am so glad that helped you, Mrs. N.O. She said she followed my tips and it helped so much the last time she washed it. Hello. Okay, so now I'm just kind of taking and brushing all of this back part forward. And again, focusing that blow dryer right at the roots. So I'm really pretty much just focusing on getting all those roots dry first and combing the hair in the opposite direction you want it to lay. So once I feel like I've got a good basis on that side, I'm going to shift it and go to the other direction, doing the same thing. So combing that hair over. Take this section, get those roots nice and dry. And then you're gonna, so again, with that flat brush, I'm pulling the hair out and around, which is gonna give you shape here. So I'm not taking the brush and going straight down. I'm going, I'm drawing basically like as if I were drawing like a half pull it out from my head with the brush. Any tips when your hair falls off a lot? Oh, whoa. Ah, sorry. <laughs> when your hair falls off a lot, tell me, give me a little bit more of what you mean by that. And no, I don't use a round brush, just a flat brush. Hey, Dan. <laughs> oh, good. We can wash. We can dry our hair together. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take this back section here. I turned my blow dryer off just because I'm going to grab this section. So this is a pretty big section of hair right here. And while I'm blow drying it, I'm going to be... God, this thing keeps... I'm going to basically be doing the exact same thing. So I'm gonna be blow drying at the root back here and just pulling that hair straight up like this. Is it weird to change your part when you part it on one side your whole life? Not at all. Like my whole life, I actually parted on the other side. And then probably five years ago, I started switching it around. And to be honest with you, I pretty much do it different. 
every day. I never keep my hair the same, the part. I think it's good to switch it up because I think you get more volume that way. Would you say that coloring your base a level 8 helps maintain your blonde highlights? My natural is a level 6. Absolutely. So the reason I went to doing that, like a base color with a highlight instead of highlighting all over, is I do less. This is driving me bonkers. I do less bleach because I, I only do like those front bleach parts and then the rest is just lightening up my base. And I'm about the same as you. I'm a natural level six. So I do a level eight. Okay, again, next section, focusing at the root. Yeah, if you were using a round brush, you would use it the same way, 100%. Can you link my brush? I totally can, it's an Aveda paddle brush. And I, I yeah, I'm a round brush challenge. I round brush for years and years, and to be honest with you, I feel like I can get the same effect with a flat brush a lot of the times. It's just not really worth it to do so much work with a round brush. Okay, so now once I get to this front section, yeah, I'll link my brush. Um, it's an Aveda paddle brush, but I will, I will try to find one on their site and link it. Okay, so now I'm gonna work towards the front section, okay? So here in the front, again, I part my hair um, either on this side or in the middle. So when I brush it, when I blow dry it, if I'm going to part it on the side, I'm going to take everything and go off to the opposite side. Almost like you part over here, you're just going to start brushing everything over this way as you dry it, even though I part over here. That's going to give you so much more lift right here in the front. Then if I part it in the middle, then I drag everything forward. Do you think anyone can pull off the no bangs looks? I've had bangs my entire life. For sure, yeah, I definitely think so. I think the big thing is, I mean, it's always an adjustment. Like in, some people will say, if you have like a really huge forehead, you should have bangs. But I have a really huge forehead. <laughs> and I don't have bangs and it's fine. I've had bangs a few times in my life too. And I feel like there's just um, keys to making it you just have to keep that lift in the front and not, you know, super flat and sleek around your face if you don't wear bangs. Otherwise, it'll emphasize the forehead. Um, yes, Lash Beautiful agrees that the Aveto paddle, br pr this paddle brush is like the bomb.com. Okay, so front part. We'll drag it all forward. And again, from the side, I'm doing the same thing. Like I'm not just going straight down, but I'm kind of going out and creating a curve to the, to the hair right there.
So, I've got the basics of it dry. So right now, I'm just kind of working my paddle brush around my head. So I'm just working the paddle brush around my head, kind of just following it in a circle, and really focusing that blow dryer at my roots, and working the hair in the opposite direction I want it to lay, to make sure it's all dry. And then I might kind of pull some forward like this, just to make sure I get it all nice and dry. So as you can see, I'm working mostly with this part of my hair. Like everything from about the eyes up, this whole section. That's the stuff that you want to make sure you get all the good lift. Crazy hair. <laughs> and then I'm just, now I'm just kind of going through and filling it with my hands to make sure everything is like 100% dry. Sorry. I said the S-I-R-I -I word and she interrupted me. <laughs> she, she heard me. <laughs> okay. So now it's all dry. Now, so this is then where, oh my gosh, why is it so slippery today? Whoa, got some awesome hair. <laughs> okay, but you can see how big and crazy that is. That's exactly how you want it. So then from here, you can determine where you're going to part it. So like if I go down the middle, I will part it and then, you know, go from there. But that gives you, you can see, like that gives you so much lift and volume to start off with. And then if you were to part it on the side, you know, if I was parting on the side, kind of the same thing. Do you see that? See how much volume you have and lift? And a lot of that is from the products as well as, um, you know, that technique of blow drying. So, um, I'm gonna read some of these questions here. Mom, what? Is it okay that you're getting nervous? Your bow seems so good out there. Yeah, that's fine, honey. Is it on our Christmas tree? Yeah. Yay, let's see, I have super thick hair with a kind of wavy curly texture. How should I ask for my hair to be thinned? It's way too thick, but I'm scared to cut it because it's been botched in the past. Yeah, that can be tricky for sure. Um, if you have thick hair, there's a couple different ways. You know, the thinning shears, really a good combination of a bunch of different texture is probably gonna be the best bet. So like probably a little bit of thinning shears as well as some slide cutting. I would probably avoid the razor because a razor is gonna kind of fray that hair up a little bit where it's curly, sometimes it can create a little more frizz. So I maybe wouldn't do a razor, but. I need height in the center of my head, 80s era faucet look. How can I achieve that? Exactly like I just did. Um, let's see. Okay. When do you use a diffuser? You use a diffuser if you um, have curly hair. That's when you use a diffuser. <laughs> Heather, I'm doing a blow dry tutorial. Did you not see it? Parent house or parenthood house. Hello, hello, hello. M. Crozier, thank you, thank you. I'm glad you finally cut 14 inches. That's a lot, but that is like getting rid of. Um, Lots of baggage right there. This is my daughter. Deanne says hi, Finn. Hi. <laughs> okay, any more questions before I shut this down? Yeah. Anything else? Okay, hopefully that helps. They've been... Finn, don't. They've, I've... <laughs> I 
Heather says, ask your mom what she's doing. What are you doing? A blow dry tutorial. <laughs> I've had it. Mary Kate says she's had a pat and a beta <laughs> paddle brush since high school. Totally worth it. You ain't kidding. I really think I've had this for like 15 years and this thing is like still in tip top shape. Amanda Locke. Yes, you are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to hop off. Hopefully this helps. Finn, don't do that. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. My, my daughter is disturbing. Okay. Have a good Saturday. Okay, I'll do some more makeup lives too. I'm hoping I have some. Oh, okay. Never mind. I won't say that on here because I have some other videos that I got to do. Yay. Yeah. We will do um, Asher's. I will definitely do some more makeup lives. Um, mascara ones. You betcha. In fact, I'll try to get one up no. Monday or Tuesday. Okay, have a good Saturday. Yay. See ya!